We got hit with another big news story today, which could worsen the recent and unprecedented dislocation in the world's derivative versus physical gold bullion markets. Hello, this is James Anderson of Nesty Bullion, and we are going to begin this market update by reading you this short article, and then we'll peel back a few layers of this story's build over the last handful of years. One of the three largest commercial bank gold traders globally, not JP Morgan, not HSBC, but Scotiabank is bowing out of the global gold and precious metals trading arena. This exclusive news out of Reuters today confirmed recent suspicions that Scotiabank's precious metals division was recently again bleeding with trading losses, perhaps as large as ones alleged during the 2016 silver price run-up, contributing to the growing belief that its metals division's days were numbered. Effectively, this Reuters exclusive report by Peter Hobson says near as much. The article reads, Exclusive, Scotiabank to close its metal business, sources. Bank of Nova Scotia told staff on Tuesday it would close its metals business, drawing the curtain on one of the most venerable names in precious metals trading, two sources familiar with the matter, told Reuters. Scotia was for years the world's biggest lender to the physical precious metals industry with a history stretching to the founding in 1684 of London gold dealer Makata Bullion, which it bought in 1997. Once a global player with more than 100 staff and offices from New York and London to India and Hong Kong, the bank sharply downsized the business in 2018 after a strategic review and an unsuccessful attempt to find a buyer. But it remains one of the five banks that settle gold trades and one of 12 market makers that provide liquidity in the London market. It is also a participant in daily auctions that set a globally used gold benchmark price. Scotia had a global call with its metal staff, and it was shutting down its metals business, said one of the sources. The plan is to unwind the metals business, said another. A spokeswoman for Scotiabank declined to comment. Sources said Scotia would not take on new business and would wind down existing activities by around the beginning of 2021. Some staff would be kept on over that period, while others would be made redundant, they said. Around 15 people work in Scotia's metals business, industry sources said around three-quarters of them in precious metals and the remainder in industrial metals. That compares to around 140 five years ago, the sources said. Peter Groskopf, chief executive officer at Sprout Inc., said today that this story uh, could lead to a further supply crunch for gold. The COVID-19 pandemic has already severely impacted the precious metals global supply chain, and he states that we are already having a tough time getting the amount of physical that we require, I think it's going to be that much harder, said Groskopf. It's almost the opposite of what's happening in the oil market right now. In 2017 and 2018, Scotiabank unsuccessfully tried to sell its precious metals business and eventually downsized the department when it couldn't find a buyer to what was reported today, roughly 10 people working in the precious metals division. In the silver gold price run up in early 2016 from a low of around $13.50 an ounce for silver spot to briefly over $21 an ounce, that's over a 50% increase in the then silver spot price. Uh, that also occurred while gold ran up about $300 per ounce in a similar time frame. Allegations at the time were that Scotia had about a half billion dollar margin call, which had to be kicked upstairs to its parent holding company, Bank of Nova Scotia and that the precious metals trading desk lost hundreds of millions of fiat fed notes being short the rising monetary precious metals at the time. Uh, given the recent plunge and then sharp rebound by the spot gold price, it's easy to presume that their precious metals desk was on the wrong side of that trade. But there are other allegations worth considering, and we're going to review a few more. Uh, Roy Sabag, CEO at Gold Money, had this two-part tweet just over a month ago on March 24th, 2020. I've received some important information relating to what's going on in the gold markets. Today, some banks failed to deliver physical in the COMEX bar EFP. As a result, these banks suffered large losses, which will soon be announced. They've also decided to exit the COMEX market. Now there remains a big shortage in physical in the COMEX denominations, so rumors are the COMEX will announce a force majeure and allow banks to deliver LBMA bars instead. This should be announced imminently. Obviously, we've covered on this channel the major change that Comex made regarding 400-ounce gold bars, an effective doubling of their supposed uh, inventory holdings. Um, but uh, he goes on today, Roy said today, Scotia Mikata, which has existed as a bullion bank since the 17th century, is shutting down. This event, which is but one visible effect of the causes I shared last month, is as important to the physical gold market as Lehman Bear Stearns' failures in 2008 were to Wall Street. 
So we have one of the largest market makers and financiers in the precious metals arena set to close shop. At the same time, a seemingly ongoing shortage of physical bullion persists. It'll be interesting to see when the large institutional investors finally decide to start moving into gold. How much physical bullion and at what price will there be? That's all for today. Take good care of yourselves and those you love. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to give our video a thumbs up and perhaps share it with those you love. To keep getting bullion related news and industry insights, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Finally, hit that alert button so you know when we publish fresh content. Give us your thoughts in the comments below. Let us know what you think and which topics you want to hear more about.